What's up, basketball fans? Welcome into NBA Now from Chat Sports. I'm your host, Jimmy Crowther, and today I'm breaking down the top five lineups for the Los Angeles Clippers heading into next season. Of course, they had a ton of turnover. I mean, they've got a brand new team, and it's an exciting one to watch. So let's start out with an obvious one. This is going to be their projected starting five. Now, Patrick Beverly is in there, of course, the defensive-minded point guard next to Landry Shamit, who's going to be a second-year guy for the Clippers. I'm excited to watch Landry Shamit. We recently did a projected breakout players for each team, and Shamit was our guy. I mean, he's a three-point shooter. He's going to provide a lot of spacing for the Clippers next season. And then Evita Subots is in the middle for L.A., and on the wings, it's Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. And in all reality... You could put anybody else you wanted to in this starting five, and it would still look pretty darn good with these two in the middle of it all. Kawhi, 27 points per game. Paul George, 28. They complement each other perfectly. They're two of the best two-way players in the game. Of course, Paul George finished as an MVP candidate and as a Defensive Player of the Year candidate this past season. Kawhi Leonard, a Finals MVP, just led the Toronto Raptors to a championship, and now he hopes to do that with the L.A. Clippers. It's going to be a special, special year for these two. So you want to make sure you're tuned in. Now, recently, a lot of NBA front office people were, were interviewed and they were asked, or they were, they were given an anonymous questionnaire. And they voted Kawhi Leonard as the best player in the NBA. The best. Better than Giannis, better than James Harden, better than LeBron, better than Anthony Davis, better than Steph Curry. Curry. Kawhi Leonard, they voted the best player. So I want to know from you guys. Do you think Kawhi is the best player in the NBA? Will he be the best player next season? If you think he will, type Y for yes. If you disagree with all the big wigs of the NBA, type N for no in the comment section below. Let me know. And now let's move on to another lineup. This one is going to be an interesting one for the LA Clippers, who are extremely deep. I mean, they have one of the best benches in the NBA going into next season. And a lot of that has to do with Lou Williams and Montrez Harrell. Look, this is their bench mob lineup. This is when every starter is off the floor, every regular starter is off the floor, and they're like, hey, we're going to run out all of our bench guys, and heck, it looks pretty darn good. Lou Williams, 20 points per game. That's your new point guard. Rodney Magruder, you put him into shooting guard position. Look, he provides some defense. He's still got some room to grow. Mo Harkless, a newly acquired forward from the Portland Trailblazers. I like what they did by adding him to their bench. Jermichael Green, a stretch four. He provides some good shooting as a big man. And then, of course, in the middle, it's Montrez Harrell. But the guy who, the, 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 stir, that str the stir that straws this drink, I think, is that, how that, is that how the saying goes? Yeah, exactly like that. I, I nailed that one. Uh, is Lou Williams here. I mean, he won the 2018-2019 Sixth Man of the Year Award. He, he's an absolute stud. He won it for a reason. He averaged 20 points per game. And look, in, in any real moments, in any time it's time to step up big, for L.A., Lou Will is going to be in there. He's going to give you a scoring punch every single time he's on the floor. Last year, 20 points per game, 3 rebounds, 5.4 assists, and from 3 point, you had to stay up on him, 36.1. There is a reason he was the sixth man of the year. And if he's running the bench lineup, that's like an actual NBA, a regular NBA starter for any other team. But Lou Williams, he's thrived off the bench for so long in his career. And now, as a part of a team in the L.A. Clippers who is a championship contender, it's going to be even better. I'm excited to watch him. But the other guy that I like for this team off the bench, Mo Harkless. Of course, as I mentioned, traded from Portland to L.A. in that deal that sent Hassan Whiteside to the Portland Trailblazers and, of course, Jimmy Butler to the Miami Heat. Look, he provides you with you provides you with some valuable wing defense, and he is, look, he's a little inconsistent on the offensive end. You can see it in his numbers last season. He only shot 27.5% from three. He didn't get really consistent minutes in Portland last year. It was kind of an up-and-down season. But when it comes to depth and youth, Mo Harkless brings a lot to this L.A. Clipper team. So depth in L.A., an absolute strength. I'm excited to see what that bench lineup can do for the Los Angeles Clippers next season. Now, are you a true NBA fan? I mean, truly, truly, are you a true NBA fan? Do you watch the NBA? Do you follow every little second of it? Well, if you're not subscribed to Chat Sports, then I don't believe you. So, so you want to make sure you're subscribed. The link is below, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. But you're watching on YouTube, hit the red button. Make sure you're subscribed so you can stay up to date with every little thing that we do here on Chat Sports. Let's keep it rolling with these top five lineups for the LA Clippers going into next season. Look, this is the crunch time lineup. Of course, there's the starters, 
And they're going to start out the game for you, which, you know, makes some sense because they are the starters. But this is when it comes down to it. It's a tight ball game, and you got to put in your best players. And this is the five I'm rolling with. Patrick Beverly and Lou Williams. That's your backcourt because you get the defense in Pat Bev. You get the scoring in Lou Williams. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George because, of course. And in the middle, it's Montrez Harrell. And it makes the most sense to have your best big man in there no matter how big he is. Montrez Harrell, he's about six foot eight. But he's a special player, and he can defend those bigger centers because he plays strong, plays with a lot of energy, and you can't you can't keep him off the boards. I mean, he's going to go and get every single rebound. That's why he finished as a top three candidate for six man of the year this last season. The LA Clippers had Lou Williams, the six man of the year, and Montrez Harrell, who also finished top three, which is absolutely ridiculous. So when it comes down to it, Harrell's the guy you're going to want in the middle when you got to get a big time bucket. Last season, the reason he finished so high in that voting, 16.6 points per game, six and a half rebounds. The assist, not really big because he is in the middle. But the blocks per game at 1.3 when you're six foot eight, that's a pretty nice number. I, I love Montrez Harrell. He, he just is infectious on the court. You can't help but pay attention to what he's doing. Now, he is a bit undersized, so when you go up against the Joel Embiid's of the world and those kind of guys, the Nikola Jokic's, maybe you don't want him out there. But I think he makes the most sense. On the offensive end, you absolutely need Montrez Harrell. Coming off the bench, he's going to do some big things for the Clippers next season. And it's a contract year. So watch out for that. Now I'm going to hook you up. If you want to play with the Los Angeles Clippers in NBA 2K20, here's what you got to do. Sign up and deposit with MyBookie. If you put down 50 bucks, we're going to give you 50 bucks to bet with. Just place that first bet. That's all you got to do. After you do it, email us, promo at chatsports.com, and we're going to send you a free copy of NBA 2K20. All you got to do is put that 50 bucks down with my bookie. Chatsports.com slash NBA now. Use promo code CHATNBA, okay? And then if you want to challenge me in 2K, which I don't advise because I'm going to make you look like a child, you can you can slide into my DMs on Twitter, get my, get my Xbox gamer tag. I'll, I'll go up against you in NBA 2K20 once it releases on September 6th. Let's keep it moving. The Los Angeles Clippers... Their defense is going to be the scariest part about them. I mean, they've got some great offensive players. Lou Williams, Paul George, and Kawhi are obviously more than capable of scoring the ball. But when it comes to stopping the ball, these five are going to do it the best. It's Patrick Beverly and Kawhi Leonard. That's your quote-unquote backcourt with Paul George in there as a forward. Paul George, Kawhi, whoever wants to take that guard, whoever wants to take the forward, they can do it just fine. Montrez Harrell, in at power forward, he can go just about any power forward in the league. Whether it's out on the wing or it's down in the post, Montrezl Harrell's going to do a good job with it. And a guy that's really coming into his own defensively, and Ivica Zubats. I like him a lot. He's a good low post defender. He's not quite a rim protector, but he's just a big body that takes up space. So you got to have him in there for that defensive lineup. If you're trying to get a stop, these are the five you're going to want on the court. And the number one, I think, I think the best, the, the most infectious defender on this team is Patrick Beverly. He's not the best defender. Obviously, Kawhi and Paul George hold that title. But when it comes to the guy that's going to go out there and stop literally anybody, heck, he was tasked with guarding seven-foot Kevin Durant in the NBA playoffs, and Patrick Beverly's like six-foot-three. He's one of the best defensive point guards in the NBA, and he's becoming a really good three-point shooter as well. Now, with Patrick Beverly, injuries have always been an issue. I think they've always kind of stopped him from reaching his full potential. But as a defender and as a three-point shooter, he does all the right things. Now, these numbers, they don't jump off the page to you. They did re-sign him, the Los Angeles Clippers, to a $40 million deal. 7.6 points per game, the five rebounds, nearly four assists. But 39.7% from three, look, if you got Paul George and Kawhi Leonard on the floor, you don't need Patrick Bev Beverly to go out and make plays and score the ball. You just need him to spot up, hit the open three, and then go stop the point guard on the other end. And I promise you, Patrick Beverly is going to get that done for the Clippers next season. So obviously Beverly's important. Kawhi Leonard's important. Paul George, they're all going to be important pieces to this Clippers team. The question is now, what seed will they actually finish as in the Western Conference next season? We did our power rankings here on Chat Sports, and uh, if you want to know what we have them ranking as for next year, go back, go check out that video. But let me know in the comment section, will they finish first, second, third, Fourth, if you think they're going to finish any lower than that, I, it might be a little crazy there. But let me know in the comment section below. Now let's get into this last lineup. It's, it's not the most exciting lineup, okay? Let, let's just be honest with that. This is the quote-unquote load management lineup. Because between Kawhi Leonard, 
and Paul George who's coming off shoulder surgery, there's going to be some nights where your big time stars don't play. You're not going to watch your veterans playing every single game in the regular season because this Clippers team is looking to make a deep run in the playoffs. So I've got Lou Williams sitting out here. I've got Kawhi Leonard sitting out. I got Paul George sitting out. It just makes some sense. Patrick Beverly taking a night off. So this is what you run with. Second year point guard Jerome Robinson. He's running the show there next to Landry Shamit. He's another second year guy. It's, it's a fun young backcourt, I guess. Mo Harkless, I'll keep him in there at just 26 years old. Montrez Harrell, of course, is still a young guy. And then in the middle, Fiondu Cavagnelli out of Florida State, a new rookie that the, the Clippers just agreed to uh, a long-term deal with. So stay tuned, we'll get to him. But I want to talk a little bit more about Jerome Robinson. He was drafted 13th overall just two years ago. He was a lottery pick. Some people are like, who is Jerome Robinson? Well, he played 33 games in the NBA, but he had a disappointing rookie year. And to be honest, he's not going to have a lot of pressure on him to succeed this next season because the Clippers are going to be really good. They don't need all these second-year guys to just be really incredible. But a good thing about Jerome Robinson's season this next year, Shea Gildas Alexander is out of the picture. He, he's up in Oklahoma City, and Jerome Robinson's going to get a little bit more time to develop, and he's going to need it. Because in those 33 games, these are the numbers he put up. 3.4 points per game, 1.2 rebounds, and 0.6 assists. So if the Clippers want a true backup point guard to kind of come along, this is the guy, Jerome Robinson. He's going to have to step up. Obviously, they have Lou Williams. They have Patrick Beverly. But if they want to develop Robinson, he's got some work to do this next season. But one guy they feel really good about, and I like a lot, Fiondu Cavagnelli. 27th pick overall out of Florida State. I promise that's how you pronounce his name. You can read it over and over again. It's a, it's a tough one, but I learned it up here for you guys. He signed a multi-year contract after an impressive summer league debut. He did really well. He averaged 17 points per game, 7.8 rebounds, I think something like one and a half blocks. And he shot 43.8% from three, something that I honestly didn't know he did on a regular basis because he's a big man. He's six foot ten, but he does a really good job of it. He did a good job of it at Florida State as well. These were his numbers last season with the Seminoles, 13.2 points per game. Look, 5.9 rebounds, it's a little concerning. I think he, he's going to want to up that. You're going to want him to up that if he can be a starting center. Maybe he's a power forward in this league, but he's a good shot blocker. One and a half blocked shots per game. And there's that three-point percentage again, 36.9. I like Fiondu Cavagnelli a lot. I don't think he's going to get a ton of run this next year, unless, of course, Zubats or maybe even Montrez Harrell go down with some kind of injury. But if he does, if he does get some real run, I feel confident in what he can do in the NBA. So now that was the load management lineup. Let me just remind you, this was my starting five, okay? This is going to be the starting five on opening night for the LA Clippers, or at least it should be. Pat Bev, Shamit, Leonard, PG, and Zubats. That's your starting five there with Lou Williams and Montrez Harrell, your key pieces off the bench for the Los Angeles Clippers. And here's a question that everybody loves to argue over. We love to argue over it. Who has the better duo? Which LA team is it? Because can't really argue that's the two best duos in the NBA. Is it the Los Angeles Lakers with Anthony Davis and LeBron James? Or does it belong to Kawhi Leonard and Paul George with the Clippers? If you think it's the Lakers, I want you to type LAL in the comment section below. If you think it's the Clippers, type LAC. Let me know in the comment section.